let's go let's go copy the link go here Twenty-four. Let's go. All right. Let's see. Cool. 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 Thirty-three seconds. Let's go over our right here. Have it ready. Start putting our timestamps. Intro. Perfect. Save it. Put on the live streams. We're good to go. Okay. All right. So happy Monday, everybody. Um, as always, uh, I have one of these once a month to kind of update the community on the things that I know, um, things that you know are coming up, that kind of stuff. So we'll be talking over that in the near future. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything in particular, please let me know. We're going to be making some updates on the Tick Mini uh, M5, some Beam F1 Pro, you know, all those good things so that you guys have uh, the ability to, you know, check it out. And if you guys have any specific questions um, for the um, for the live stream, uh, that's cool, too. So make sure to put them in the in the description below. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to figure some things out here, sending it to all the live stream places that we need to send it to. Here's the like phone one. Oh, no, not that link. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go over a couple of posts that I saw that were helpful as well. Um, and a couple extra things here and there. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments and I'll be, you know, kind of like talking about it, talking about some personal projects that I'm going to be going over this summer uh, and other things like that. Uh, so let's start with an update on the Tick Mini. I'm going to put the battery saver on because it's not fully charged. But um, Tick Mini M5 has now a uh, FCC ID certification. So we are at two minutes and 40 seconds. So. Uh, let's go over here, copy that, so 245, we started talking about this. So the Tick Mini M5 has a certification uh, nowadays, which means that uh, the phone is getting just better compatibility and more official. So, you know, the FCC certification is really important because it allows you to trust that it has been tested uh, here in the United States. And it, you know, it, it's kind of like another layer that, hey, it's going to work and it's going to work well. Um, as you know, the Tick Mini is, it's an Android phone, uh, but it, the small screen and the keypad definitely are going to deter your usage. So it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be just a little bit, a little bit better uh, compatibility with Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, even though it works with most of those, it's going to have more of a backing now that the FCC certification is there. Um, so as always, I recommend for any, honestly, any phone that has a keypad that you use TT9 uh, because it's going to be a better experience typing. So that's a little bit of, um, you know, something that, that you should keep keep in mind. Uh, and of course, this can install pretty much any app that you want. So if you're looking for anything in specific or apps that are, um, you know, like 2FA or having the ability to, you know, kind of have a, maybe a work app teams and stuff like that, I will definitely uh, recommend it. So now that it has the FCC certification, this one step further in the certification process uh, and it's definitely going to be way more reliable than anything uh, just out there that didn't have that certification or that didn't have uh, that official backing that has been tested in the United States. Um, you can see more of like the SAR values and, you know, that kind of stuff. If you just look up for FCC, take, uh, let me look up so I can show you guys, take mini M5 FCC. Um, so look it up here. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, so screen capture right there. So this is the website, FCC 
uh, id.io. Um, and here you look, look, you can look into like what frequencies they tested and, you know, like which bands. Um, you also have the user manual, internal photos, external photos, test report on the different bands. Like, for example, band 66 is one of the most important ones for a lot of people. And you can see there whether it's actually compatible or whether they're just saying it's compatible. But um, right there, you know, you have test report applicant test result passed yes so that's a good thing right so if you have the test results with the different bands gsm um you also have a lot of other kind of documentation wi-fi um and sar reports so if you're looking into rf exposure and how much is the rf exposure then this can also help you in that um and you you know again this is available data you know and like it says that it's passed, but like what, what in specific, right? Like, you know, how, how do they test it? What's the actual head versus body SAR, you know, and you're able to look and compare uh, if that's something that's really important to you. So again, this is a very good thing that I recommend um, everybody in the United States. So if you're looking for a specific phone and you want to make sure that you understand some extra information about it, um, I definitely recommend that you look into it for that for that certification for the fcc um and you know that way it allows you to kind of like get more information um on on this on the device in specific but um again i hi highly recommend it i'm going to put a link if you're interested in the tig mini it's definitely still one of the more expensive um you know devices it's one of the more expensive devices out there but again it it, it works and it delivers you know on what it's promised which is compatibility here in the united states and also compatibility for like other um for other areas you know so give me a second i need to uh get in here oh there it is. just opens the chat so if you want to get the tick mini m5 link there it is so you can put it you can get it out there it's on amazon so you have the ability to do that um, Adam, Odman, and Luncheon, uh, thank you for joining the stream. Hope it was helpful today. I hope you guys uh, learned something new. And, you know, again, if you guys have any specific questions about devices, releases, and stuff like that, we're going to be talking about a couple of these things. Um, so that's on the Tech Mini M5. Uh, good device, uh, good stuff happening with it. I'm really happy that they have now gotten that certification because it moves them along. Um, I don't know if it's still PTCRB compliant, which is the extra, you know, kind of certification that requires for Verizon and AT&T, but I highly recommend this device. If you have $300 and you're looking for a device that has all of the capabilities, Android auto, you know, apps that you need for work, but still has that small screen that is not going to be super alluring, super tempting. Um, okay, perfect. So let's go over. Uh, the next thing, which is Lightphone update. So Lightphone uh, is now on the next version. They released a patch, a little patch update. Uh, and uh, th there's a couple things I didn't showcase in the past one. Uh, let me see. It is 844 now. So 844. We start with the Lightphone 2 update. And I'll update on a couple things extra as well. Um, so first things first, um, they did an update on the music podcast, you know, and how all of that works. They also have the timer now. Um, I think it's a little dim. Give me a second. I'm going to put it a little bit. Ooh. That's better, right? Yeah, that's better. That's way better. Okay, perfect. Um, so Lightphone has now a timer update. I did a video on it and I'm really pleased with, you know, how they have done it. Essentially, you set up whatever seconds is very minimal here, but you can also set up a custom one if you press that um, right there, that edit kind of like looking button. Uh, and you can put like, you know, if you want it to be two seconds or one second or whatever it is. Um, so it kind of like uh, looks into that. But it also they added a new mode, which is the um, do not disturb. So before it used to have just kind of like silent, then vibrate, and then you have ringer. 
right there I see you have seven ringers now instead of the usual five so now you have five uh, seven ringers you have vibrate only and you also have the not disturb which will not wake up any the screen at any point in time my battery life also has improved a lot um, I think this is my second day maybe my second and a half day uh, using this device and I'm on 41 percent so 41 percent very good um, uh, battery life uh, now it's definitely two days every single time before it used to be like one to two and now it's like two running into the third you know depending on how much i use it but two days is uh, excellent for such a small device right like the battery on this one is, is very tiny so i'm really happy about that um, they are also updating a little bit of the ca the, the calendar uh, the calendar now has these dots when you're looking in the view month so like it has this like really small dots you probably cannot let me zoom in maybe like so like right there you can see so those dots right there um you have the ability to know if you have an event so the bolded is it's today right and then if you have a dot it's like there's an event coming up for work or you know whatever it is that you're that you're doing in life um so that's a definitely a quality of life improvement right there for the light phone too um and they have added I think one more thing that they added was um, a little bit more of the prompting of the directions. Now it's going to be better in battery life, but they're coming with another update coming up soon that is going to be uh, improving how the phone interacts with the GPS and it's going to be just way faster, easier, and just better to, to kind of use. So um, they, I believe it's going to be... Hmm. I wonder. Um, I think there there's going to be something coming up. Version 89 on the firmware that is going to be allowing this extra, you know, GPS capability. So a lot of updates coming up down the pipeline now for the Light Phone 2. And also, um, of course, you know, stay tuned for a probable Light Phone 3 coming up soon. I would say I'm going to expect an announcement this year and definitely probably release for next year. And it's going to be a completely different device than what most people expect. Um, but it's going to still, you know, kind of adhere to the ethos. So if you're looking for an e-ink device, I don't think the Lifeone 3 will have an e-ink. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, but that's because I think they're, they're trying to separate the segments and like, you know, how everything is going to be. Uh, but it's still going to be very minimal, very basic, uh, very, you know, tool-based instead of like app-based, which... Uh, you know, you kind of have that. Um, okay. Um, what else? Um, oh, yes. I do have some updates on the Light Phone 2. The shop that they have, I think this is kind of like some cool merch. Um, and I think personally, I ordered a couple things uh, from their merch shop. So let me showcase to you guys uh, this. So um, they have, of course, the light phone, right? And I'll, I'll include a link in just a second. And the cases, which favorite case is the lemur case, by the way. Um, this one right here holds some credit cards and has like the ability to do things. Um, I, prefer, I would have loved to have the green one, but at the time they only had these three and I got the red one. Uh, it is what it is. But they have the shirt and the hats. So like they have uh, these different hats, blue, black, but this one is really cool. Um, this is probably my favorite kind of like understanding of digital minimalism and it's like your time uh their money right so like you have your time their money and that's essentially what it conveys the idea that the reality is that when we give our time to things that are not good for us or that we give our time to things that we don't value you know then we are wasting our time instead of actually you know using our time for for the better purposes or the things that we actually want to do in our life so i got one of these and i hope to get it probably in the next um, you know couple of days or so but i'm really excited because um yeah it has it has just a very good meaning it has a very good idea behind it and it's a cool you know it's a cool hat so you know if you if you like wearing hats like you know they have that now um let me get you a link for uh the light phone stuff and if you want to buy it, you know, again, any, any of the links supports the channel. So, you know, thank you for using that. And if you don't, that's okay too. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, 
putting anybody to to say like, oh, you have to use my link. No, you, you can go through a different link or whatnot. Um, I just, you know, if you plan to buy something, it'll be nice. I'll be appreciated if you use my link because that, that gives a little bit of a kickback to, to the channel and uh, keeps the content coming. Um, okay, let's see. Yep. Light phone 2 link. There it is. Thanks a bunch. Um, okay, so a couple questions came in. So let's go over that. Uh, these are light phone related, so I'm going to keep them on the same um, kind of like timestamp. So we have on a scale of from 1 to 10, where would you put call quality on the light phone 2? Um, I would say it's about a seven or eight, depending on your carrier. I had T I have T-Mobile here and it's an eight for sure. It's clear, crisp. Um, I tend to use headphones when I'm walking around and talking to people. So that takes it up a notch because the headphone quality is like better. Um, but if I'm just on the earpiece, I will, I will rate it a seven because um, the earpiece is loud enough. But if you're in a very noisy environment, Definitely, it's going to struggle a little bit more. And the speaker phone is also because of the phone is so small. Um, you know, it's so tiny. And like, here's the speaker. Like, uh, you know, it's very small compared to like a smartphone. Uh, it's not super loud. So I personally think that that's, a, that's something that, you know, kind of like when I look at it, I would say is, is a 7 out of 10 overall. But with headphones, you know, I can go to eight or nine, depending on your headphones. Um, I've had really pleasant conversations, especially with my um, bigger headphones. I have I have a pair of Sennheiser uh, BT450 headphones. So when I connect these, you can connect them via the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or you can connect it via Bluetooth, and I haven't had any issues. I, I have really pleasant conversations with this. Um, and also with my Nothing Ear uh, 2 or Ear Stick, that's what it is, the Ear Stick. Uh, these ones are very good as well, uh, very good call quality in my experience, and I've enjoyed I've enjoyed using them for sure. Um, okay, uh, next question, Life on 2 says, Hi, Jose, just ordered Life on 2. Uh, excited to start my basic phone journey. Thanks for all, oh, yeah. thank you. Pablo for ordering the, the phone, uh, you know, hope it, it helps, you know, in your journey and, um, you know, kind of like opens you up to like different experiences and, and that kind of like that kind of idea. Um, okay. Next is John, John Ludwig says, how long should a light phone to device last before recommending a new one? In the last six months, I have had so many issues with phone calls. When I want to hang up, the X won't let me end the call. The phone also heats up really quickly, so I, if I have it in my pocket, I will turn it off and try to turn it on, but it freezes before turning fully on. I have had the device for four years. Uh, good question, John. Um, I would say probably three years is like when my battery on my black light phone started to kind of like diminish really quickly, but something that I recommend everyone doing is doing a factory reset. So, you know, after you have had the device for four years, um, it, you know, sometimes devices just need a refresh. And I, before you buy a new one, you know, um, I would say definitely give a factory reset, you know, just start fresh again. Uh, the nice thing about the factory reset on the Light Phone 2 is that you have the ability to not lose a lot of your information um, on the dashboard. So if you have your music podcast and that kind of stuff linked to the device, you can just, um, keep that device and it will keep your contacts, your notes, your music, your, you know, kind of like all of the things that you had already had, um, as soon as you sign in again with that specific device. So I think that's super cool because even if you go, it's kind of like a backup, right? So like if you factor reset for whatever reason, as long as you sign in on that same device with the same number, it will resync everything like the contacts, like the music, like the podcast, uh, which is uh, something that I definitely appreciate because I don't have to start uh, fresh again. Right. So um, I will recommend that for you, John, you know, just test it out and have that ability right there to. Um, uh, yeah, just just to give it a try, you know, before you buy a new one. Um, also, you know, maybe you can hold out for an announcement and see if the Light Phone 3 will be a better 
experience or you know something that may match for you and by factory resetting it you give like a little bit more time for the announcement which again i think is going to come around sometime probably this year i will say september by september we should have more news i think um that's just my opinion you know like i don't have any true insider information I, I, do, I do talk to joe from time to time and they're really excited to showcase uh their new products or like their new ideas what they're coming up with uh, but they don't have anything concrete i know that for a fact and um you know it's not like it's not final nothing is final right now but they're moving in that direction which i think it's really 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 cool um all right awesome if there's no more questions about life and two i mean you guys can can do uh, we can do a more q a later on but we're going to talk about the next thing, which is uh, minimal phone. So I wanted to do an update on that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people really interested in what's happening with the minimal phone and how it's going to work out, how much they raised and um, that kind of stuff. I, I think there are some things that I'm still looking into or I'm still like, hey, it's what's going to happen with this uh, company? Um, but uh, it seems that they were were successful in funding it and hopefully they bring it to market um i believe now the 12th they were supposed to do an update on maybe like twitter or i don't know if they, they have a discord i believe i, I don't have access to it because i didn't back it but i'm gonna start this at 21 20 or 21 30 21 30 we're gonna talk about the mineral phone for a little bit um, kind of introduced to you. Maybe you, you guys don't know what it is. Um, Minimal phone update. Perfect. So the minimal phone is a concept as of right now. It's I don't even would call it like a proper prototype, but they do have a working idea at least uh, coming up. So this is the minimal phone. It's a QWERTY keyboard Android device. Um, it's definitely not as minimal as they first started with like, you know, just basic things. This has the play store and it has all of the other apps. The innovation here is, Hey, you're putting an e-ink screen on a specific device. Their prototype looks a little bit like this. Um, as you see right here, this is my guess uh, of what this quote unquote prototype is. Uh, so this is a e-ink wave share screen. Uh, all of these are definitely keys. They're, they're definitely QWERTY keyboard keys, but they're not in a in casing. Uh, if you can appreciate in the prototype and in the videos that you have seen, uh, this seems kind of like just glued. It's kind of like a, a, a process and they never used the, the thing to type. So I don't think that at the time that they showcased this, they had a fully working keyboard. Uh, that's just my personal understanding um, and the way that I have looked at it. Uh, but it's going to eventually look like this, right? Like, you know, a proper, you know, clickable keyboard. I mean, if you look at the depth of this uh, design and you look at the prototype right here, you can definitely see that there is no full um, kind of pressable key. Uh, it's more of like a design kind of a thing, which is fine, you know, when you have a prototype, when you have kind of like a working thing. Um, they have a... Um, discord that they allow backers to join and supposedly that's going to receive a lot of the progress and that kind of stuff um they have closed the campaign they raised six hundred and sixty one thousand dollars by 1754 backers apparently um which is a lot of money it's a ton of money honestly um and i think it should be enough to get some sort of a working prototype uh you know Again, it's kind of like, I think for $600,000, they should have something working. Uh, it probably, I don't know if it's going to be this premium. They may need some extra backing, but you know, when you have $600,000, you may be able to go to like a VC company or, you know, other angel investors to be like, Hey, you know, we have 600,000. We'll give you 10% of our company for, I don't know. Uh, 150 or you know i mean the valuation is there right like you know the concept is there the valuation is there uh, if you put the valuation just a little bit more because you crowdfunded uh, you're able to get into a angel investor kind of uh, uh understanding and that kind of stuff i believe on twitter uh there you go i have searched for his twitter before um but i don't know which um he has a linkedin but I don't know if uh, I, I think it's Mr. Yukna or something like that. Yukana, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I have searched for it before. So, oh, there it is. Perfect. 
Um, so big news coming April 12th. That's about it. So, um, yeah. So apparently they're, they're, um, oh, they're minimalcompany.com. Oh, there you go. Now they're loading pre-orders. Oh, okay. No, no, no. They, they're, they're not uh, loading pre-orders yet, but they have, uh, kind of like a thing. Press highlights. They, they have some things. They have a keyboard and of course a new website. Uh, this website is better than their other one. Um, so they had that. Um, yeah. So I guess, you know, kind of like, again, still a concept still, I, I think they're working on it. So hopefully, you know, again, it says big news coming. So hopefully there's going to be more understanding. Um, what I, I told people is like, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I didn't mind. Um, oh, I think, I guess you can buy it still. Yes, you can. You can still buy this. Oh, okay. So you can still give them money. Um, I still wouldn't personally. I haven't seen any advanced prototypes and, and if I see one, I will definitely buy one. I'm not, you know, opposed to doing that. So apparently because it's an in-demand campaign, uh, I guess you can continue funding them. Um, but I personally still don't think that there's enough information for me to make that, that, that contribution, you know, and like, I would like to definitely wait until there's more information. So, but it seems like it's going well. And again, I did write a post where I was like, Hey, you know, there's these concerns, but don't judge them on the concerns or like, you know, the people have, you know, pasts where they have failed projects, you know, I have had failed projects, you know, and nobody knows about them because, well, you know, it is what it is. And then there were some concerns, definitely some le legitimate concerns about certain websites, even though it was kind of like shady websites or things that I was like, I don't know, like, you know, like these websites seem to be defamatory in nature. Um, but of course, be always be cautious. And I always put my money on things that are you know, more like a proof of concept. And so far I haven't seen that from them, but hopefully very soon they're going to have a more robust prototype. And then I'm going to make an update and I'm going to say to people like, Hey, this is a robust prototype. It seems like they just need more money to like, you know, get it to the finish line and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll have it coming up. But right now it's $390. But if this phone is going to be 439, I mean, I, I don't see an issue why you shouldn't just wait because, you know, like it's going to be just a couple of extra dollars. Uh, and even if it was $500, right? Like if you're really interested in the phone, I'd rather risk $500 once the product is actually there rather than like 390 when the product is, you know, I, I haven't even seen an extra prototype. But again, you know, they probably may have extra updates on the Discord um, or extra things that we are not able to see. But, you know, it's just kind of like, Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes looking. If you're really interested in this project, check out their updates. Um, he has very public facing, you know, LinkedIn and other things. So again, I, I think like um, you should look into it um, and you should look into like what, what it is that uh, excites you. And if you really think it's a company that you trust and if it's not, you know, that's okay. Uh, there are other companies that are coming with other things, which will go to the next company that's going to be releasing a few things, which is Mudita, um, a company that already released something. Uh, what they released, the Mudita Pure, was in a perfect device. And sadly, you know, it didn't have uh, a lot of good backing um, in the network department. So we're going to go over the Mudita Compact updates. Uh, compact putting out the timestamps for those that are watching for later. Um, okay, so let's go over here. So if you go to forummedita.com, you have the ability there to um, get some extra updates and, you know, kind of like talk to the company. Oh, I do want to talk about this. We'll talk about that in just a second um, because I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, so they had an extra update. Um, nope, no, 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 not this one. Um, where is it? Okay, here, there it is. So this is the Mudita Compact. Nothing yet, no? Okay, where's the picture? Okay, so this is the coming soon one, but there was a another, aha, here. Okay, so what I can tell from this picture. 
Um, so number one, the Mudita Compact is an upcoming e-ink device that is essentially what I am going to call a bigger light phone. So, you know, the light phone is quite small, but it's going to be probably, yeah, probably along the lines of a Pixel 3, maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, my estimation is a 4.5 inch, inch screen by the things that I have seen. Um, so it's going to be like definitely bigger. I would say somewhere around here, right? So like somewhere around here. Um, so just cut this this portion. That's what the Mudita Compact is going to be. It's going to be probably 4.5 inches. And as you see right here, it's going to have wireless charging. Uh, so the Mudita Compact uh, is charging with wireless. And I can tell it's a 4.5 because of this screen ratio. So if you see right here, um, this ratio right here, um, if you just close the gap just a little bit, like just a little bit more like around here, it gives you probably the semblance of a 4.5 inch screen device. But it's kind of cool that it does have um, that um, wireless charging option. Probably that means it has some sort of NFC as well. And as you see here, like, I mean, you see right there, um, if I put this picture and this picture together, the ink, right? Um, I can probably deduce that it's probably around 4.5 inches uh, for the for the device but i'm really excited because um, they're revealing sneak peeks every month and whatnot um and this last one was on march 29th so there's one coming now in april but it has wireless charging i have i have confirmed that it does have good compatibility with the networks so it does have the ability to do um um you know, a lot of the carriers here in the United States and a lot of the carriers in Europe without a lot of issues. So I personally think uh, it's going to be a better device than the, um, than the, what's it called? Um, than the Pure. So the Pure was a disaster just networks wise. And, you know, I think that <clears throat> definitely they, they, they needed to do a lot, a lot of work. Uh, you can still get, I believe, the Mudita at the outlet store. So they'd have a new outlet store. Uh, you, you can get the Mudita Pure um, as an outlet product. Uh, probably these are refurbished versions, but they're you know probably in very good condition or stock that they just had remain. Um, and you can get it up to, I guess, uh, $279. So that's, that's not bad. That was Kickstarter pricing um, back in the day. I went to 349, I believe, or 399. I don't remember the exact number of uh, the, the, the exact uh, price uh, that that it was back in the day. But if you're looking into a device that's super minimal and uh, it has had a lot of updates since then, this is something that I I'm going to give to them uh, because I really appreciate that. Um, so Mudita has continued to make updates to their Mudita OS. Um, which is something that you don't see a lot, right? Like, you know, I mean, this this is technically a dead product, but they have continued updating. Um, let me see if I can find where the releases are. Um, license documentation. Change log, there it is. So um, here it is, the last update that they tested uh, or that, that they released, I guess, was um, March the 7th. So that's about a month ago, which I mean, again, like for a device that has not been sold for a while, they are still working on it, which I personally think uh, it's a good it's a good thing. So it's a, it's a very good thing that they continue working on the device. It shows it showcases the um, just like the the continual hey, we're imp we're improving this. We're doing this. We're we're, we're not leaving it. Um, behind and there's uh, a lot of development as you see here there's a lot of pull requests um there's a lot of like people looking into how how to help with it because it works in certain parts of of, of the world right like you know so it does work in europe uh here in the united states it doesn't work as well but they have continued making a lot of updates on it which i personally think it's just an idea that you know a lot of companies don't look into um, and I think maybe they're doing this because eventually they want to release a Mudita Pure 2, you know, and that in that way they are doing the work right now for the future. Meanwhile, they release something that is going to be easier to work, which in, in this specific case, the easier thing to develop, the easier thing to do is just to slap Android into a 
um, you know, existing manufacturing device or you manufacture your own device, which is what they're doing with the Mudita Compact. So um, if you cannot tell by the icons, uh, but the icons are very telling. These are Android icons. <laughs> and you, I guess you learn that over time when you have reviewed so many Android devices, but the layout and the way that it works, um, this is an Android uh, lock screen and you get to learn a little bit more about like the specific designs. Uh, I was probably using AOSP, which is a, a very good thing, but the Mudita Compact is coming up. So that's a little bit of an update about that one. Um, and again, Q&A coming up in just a second. So we're going to do that. Uh, and if you have any extra questions, make sure to put them there so that we can go over it. So stay tuned with the Mudita Compact. It's going to be a good device. It's going to be a e-ink device. I believe I'm going to be getting one before the time. But of course, there will be some NDA things uh, to kind of go over. And if I don't get it, that's okay. I'll, as always, I always buy all the phones I review because... I want to make sure that I give a proper impression and, you know, like, hey, I spend money on this, you should too, or I spend money on this, you shouldn't spend money on this. Um, and of course, you know, there, there's always giveaways and that kind of stuff, which reminds me, I should set up a giveaway for the month, month of April. Um, I'll set up a, a giveaway probably, <clears throat> let's see, uh, probably release it by today, tomorrow. Yeah, some, sometime between today and tomorrow, I'll be giving away some of these phones that I'm not going to be using anymore um, because, you know, I, I don't want to keep phones that I don't use um, and I want to make sure that I I give back to the community as always, you know, always try to give back to you guys since you guys have also supported the channel. Uh, but if you want to stay tuned to more Mudita updates, go to their forum, ask questions, uh, get over there and, you know, have discussions over digital minimalism and all that kind of stuff. All right. Um, next thing, definitely. Uh, let's do a little Q and A. Um, I see a couple questions in there. So now we are at thirty six minutes or thirty seven Q and A. So thirty seven ten. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I see a couple questions. Uh, first question I see is um, Na Nacion Jeep light phone. Do you all use cases or rocket with no case? I personally use the um, let me show it the lemur case. Uh, let me put this here. Perfect. So the lemur case right here, um, it has held up pretty well. As you see, there's a couple scratches and a couple things, but it's pretty durable. Um, I have, let me take this one out just so that you guys, you know, so I have, uh, five cards. I'm showing you three because these are the ones that don't have, um, personally identifiable information. <laughs> So my ride, uh, Costco, and uh, kind of like my card for the, which is not working anymore. Actually, I need to get this replaced uh, for the condo uh, complex or the apartments where I live. Um, they give us a card to kind of like tap and you know access the doors, um, which kind of leads me to <clears throat> um, the sad reality that uh, sometimes when the power goes out, uh, these cards are the, the NFC cards. They're useless. So um, we had a power outage uh, here in Colorado a few weeks ago and, you know, I had my card and I tried to use it, but because there was no power, I couldn't open the door. So I had to wait until somebody opened the door for me. And then we kind of just leave it out there. Um, we kind of just leave it out there as a, Hey, um, you know, don't lock this door cause we won't be able to get in and out of the building. Uh, especially since, you know, people were running errands because there was no power. And uh, it was a good experience, though, you know, like I didn't have uh, much to do that. I think it was a Sunday um, and I just kind of relaxed at home and, you know, kind of took that day off like slow. You know, uh, I think we went to dinner and then we went to play some board games at a friend's house. And that's that's about it. So, you know, it was kind of like, yay, you know, a, a offline day, you know, forced a little bit <laughs> of an offline day, but uh, nonetheless, a very good thing. Um, we'll go over KaiOS in just a second. I have a couple updates over that. Uh, next question. Um, on the light phone, how do I know if the call is going through Wi-Fi calling? I have bad service in my apartment and depend on Wi-Fi calling. Yes. So on the light phone, uh, there will be here an icon that is kind of like a Wi-Fi, you know, it's, there'll be a Wi-Fi icon 
um and it will be kind of like uh um like a call wi-fi icon it's, it's super small like you cannot really appreciate it let me see if they have any documentation about that um because i i don't i don't think they do but um maybe they do and maybe i just have never seen it um let me search for wi-fi calling but there is a uh, there is a icon that you see. Aha, boom, there it is. Um, let's see. Uh, I can show you. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so let's go back to here. So there is the icon um, that they have added. So whenever you're having a Wi-Fi call, um, you have the ability there to... Oh, give me a second. I got it pretty important text okay i need to fill out some forms um okay so you have wi-fi calling right there um and if the wi-fi is connected so if you're if you're in a wi-fi enabled call it will have that icon right there when you are having a call so right there you have the wi-fi icon and it will tell you like okay so you know it, it, it will connect but if you have enough signal it will also hand it off to the to the cellular connection so it, it will not drop so it was just kind of like a handoff back and forth but if you are having a wi-fi call then you will see the icon right there on the light phone too um, which is a nifty feature okay cool 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 let's see uh next question summer masri uh, we have is there a new titan pocket or any decent security but smart not yet so we talked about the minimal phone um, that's an option, but still not um, a um, viable option, in my opinion, because they need to showcase more prototyping. They need to showcase a more robust prototype. Once they do that, I'm like, okay, good. Like, you know, you can start backing it up because it's like you, they can showcase the functionality. It works with the keys. It works with, the, you know, the e-ink screen. Um, so that's like the latest um the next best um it's unihertz so unihertz so um the unihertz smartphone line uh the titan pocket of course you have the jelly star uh now you have the tank series which i will talk about a little bit i believe they're still in development but the titan pocket um they say the new qrd but it's not new it's it's still the old one and um i was I think it's a good phone, you know, but it's like, um, it's probably between the Titan Pocket and the Titan Slim, I would definitely get the Titan Pocket. That's just my personally, uh, personally preferred device. That's just my opinion. Uh, and you can get it with a lot of like the Curity, Azerty, um, kind of like different options for um, if you're looking for like a specific device that works in this region, you know, Japan, UK, Asia. Um, or if you're buying it from like these other countries, they also have that that ability right there. Um, they also have the Jelly Star, which is my work phone. Uh, as of late, I've been using I've been using the red version, um, and the Jelly is a great device. Um, I think the tiny screen is just so cumbersome and it's so thick. This device is like so um, fat, <laughs> you know, that uh, it's kind of just uncomfortable to like use it for a long time, uh, per my experience at least. Um, I believe my, I just think I can see the, uh, let me see, can showcase to you some of my good days and bad days, um, but overall it's like way less. So um, I'll give you an example of what the jelly has been able to do for me. Uh, some days I have to use it for work more and, and less, but I have decreased so much of my usage that I'm so happy. So as you see right there, this is the Jelly Star. And yesterday I used it for 37 minutes. Today, 22 minutes. Last week I used it a little bit more, uh, but different days. So like 144, 127, 219. But this 219 is tricky because technically I use an hour and 59 minutes of maps. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, there it is. It's a little bit better. Not not too crisp so technically i was on a um android auto so i was on android auto and that counts against your screen time but for me it's not a problem because i'm navigating somewhere right 
uh, I was renting a car and for an hour and 59 minutes. So I used the phone for two hours and 19 minutes, but two out of those hours were Android Auto. So I used the phone for 19 minutes. I mean, that was great. Uh, then an hour and 14, uh, 56 minutes, but that include a 20, 27 minute Zoom call, which again, like, you know, 27, 56 minus 27 is about 30. So, you know, 29 minutes. So I used my phone for 29 minutes and then I had like a super usage day, but a lot of it also was um, Android Auto. So like two hours and 48 minutes, as you see right there, where of um, maps and out of the four hours. So out of the four hours, three or so hours were maps, which I, I wasn't necessarily looking at the screen. I was looking at the road, just looking at that I was going to the right place. And then like the next day, as you see, I went back to my regular. So I have re really decreased my screen time with the Jelly 2 uh, and this minimal launcher uh, called... Um, uh, Niagara launcher. Uh, it has kind of like an alphabetical thing here, which I really enjoy. Um, and I personally like it a lot because um, you have the ability to use the device uh, and you have like, you know, a lot of like very good, uh, very good things um, still accessible to me. Like, you know, I have antenna pod and maps, like, you know, in Libby, which is my um, preferred method to listening to books or reading books. Um, I usually listen on the Jelly 2 and read on the desktop, but right now I am going over Slow Productivity, which is a book by Cal Newport, the latest book. I will showcase it to you guys in just a second. Um, but uh, yeah, the Unihertz Jelly 2, uh, I think it's a good compromise, kind of like in the middle. But for QWERTY, uh, which the question was for QWERTY, I will definitely say that the best one is the... Um, the, the best one is still the um, uh, the uh, Unihertz Titan Pocket. So yeah, I'll put a link for the Unihertz devices. Jelly Start um, right here. Uh, you can get it for about $219 if you get it on Amazon. Uh, and they will deliver to you and have that, you know, protection return. Test it out for two weeks and see if that uh, reduces your usage. I think it will uh, personally. That's just maybe a, maybe a bias, <laughs> um, maybe a bias of me. Uh, but but I think I think you will be um, you were pretty fine. You will be pretty fine. Jelly Star Link. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Next question. Um, I'm getting ready to move to a new state, a new job. I have the Nokia 6300. I was thinking about going back to the iPhone for maps. Any ideas? P.S. I love your book. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for the support on the book. I, I appreciate it. Uh, that's something that I don't mention as often, but um, Low Tech Life, a guide for mindful uh, digital minimalism uh, has been released now for almost a year. And uh, many of you have liked it. I have gotten some reviews that are, uh, you know, kind of critiques, and I appreciate those as well. Um, but on Goodreads, it's 3.7. Uh, and those guys are a little bit more, uh, I guess, like <laughs> difficult to please, <laughs> uh, you know, but but I wrote this book and it's it's been good. Uh, 4.5 uh, stars here in Amazon. Um, so if you're ever interested in checking out a copy, you can get it on different formats, paper rack, hardcover, Kindle, and audiobook as well. So you have that ability to get it on audiobook. I narrated the audiobook and I published it. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, it's, it's a good book, but it's not the only book about digital minimalism. I highly recommend Cal Newport's, uh, digital minimalism, the ep ep eponym. I think that's what the, the world, is, the word is the book that is titled the same as what I said. Um, eponymous, there you go. Eponymous. I think that's what it is. So digital minimalism, good book right there. And late, oh, oh my gosh, the latest book, you need to read this book. Um, maybe this is a book recommendation. I'll go, I'll go over a book recommendation section because I really think I've read so many good books in this past um, um, few few days uh, that, oh my gosh, like you guys need you guys need some of these books. But let's go over questions. I was thinking about going back to the iPhone for maps. Uh, any ideas? Yes, I do have an idea for uh, the iPhone. So two ideas is first one is unplug. Uh, unplug is a tag, is like an NFC tag that allows you to this uh, block all of the distractions so you know you you tab the tag you keep it with you and you're able to um you know kind of like as the girl showcase there uh if you need a break you know you kind of like tap it and you go back to it 
and boom, right there, you you have the ability to to use it. But if you don't want to use it, it's a it's a conscious choice. Uh, it will not distract you as much. Uh, second one is get clear space. Uh, get clear space um, is my second recommendation. A very similar concept, but just software enabled. There is no physical item, um, and essentially what it does is that it teaches you to kind of wait before you enter the app. So it intercepts um, the idea. And somebody that I really respect is using it as a um, is using it as a as an app. Um, they they are actually running a challenge. Uh, his name is Michael Easter. He is a author. Uh, Michael Easter. Um, he writes the two percent Substack, which I really think if you like self improvement and that kind of stuff. And two of his books, I'm going to definitely recommend at the end. Uh, but he is uh, the two percent. Um, uh, Substack, and he wrote about this uh, very a few a few um, maybe a few weeks ago. He has a challenge going on for the month of April on the uh, ClearSpace app. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Join the two percent um, screen time challenge. It was a two week um, kind of like. Uh, challenge and essentially again what the app does for clear space it it intercepts so when you open the app it intercepts and it gives you a breather for you to consider hey like do i really want to go into this app or do i not want to go into this app so it puts it at the forefront of your mind and the more you train your brain to choose no the less you're going to be dependent on those things uh, next thing uh, that i recommend is get brick similar to unpluck but this one i believe is a one-time cost um, you have right there uh, $49, you have Brick, and essentially it's very similar uh, to how it works. Uh, access Brick app without subscription. So yes, it is a one-time cost still. Uh, they are they were recently featured in an article on The New Yorker, um, and this is how it works. So 30 seconds right there, so you guys can see. So you open the Brick app, you have all of those distractions. You tap, hey, like I want to, you know, I want to app. I want to block these apps. You tap it, and whenever you go back and you try to open whatever app, it's going to tell you this is a distraction. You know, block the things that you don't want, and keep the things that you truly need, like the um, the camera or Spotify or whatever it is that doesn't really you know provide tons of distraction to your life. Uh, they were re again recently. Um, they were recently featured in an article in the New Yorker. Called the dumb phone boon is is real. Uh, many people that I know were uh, <laughs> um, were featured in this article. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent article. Actually, I'm going to link it to you guys um, because I think it's it's a good read. So Will Stoltz, uh, founder of Dumb Wireless, uh, another place where you can get a lot of good uh, minimal phones, minimal devices, unplug uh, many different things. Uh, my book as well. You can get on. <laughs> you can get right there on. Um, dumb wireless. Um, but yeah, they have phones and very curated um, matters. They even have a pre-order for the light phone uh, for the Weiss phone too, uh, which I will give an update on that too. Uh, that's a good reminder. Uh, but they have, you know, a good selection and you can use code Jose5 here, J-O-S-E 5 for a 5% discount on all of their phones. Uh, let me give you a right there uh, link to the article right there. Okay, wow, let's go. Um, so brick, get brick, unplug. I mean, you have uh, there a lot of a lot a lot to choose, right? Um, oh, okay, my uh, my uh, screen is acting up. I think maybe my RAM is a little bit low. Uh, but yes, get brick is the last one that I showcased to you guys. So get brick, unplug, clear space, very highly actionable. Uh, unplug works with Android phones as well. So if you're looking for Android. Um, and definitely if you're going back to an iPhone, I highly recommend that you get the SE version. So go back to an iPhone SE. Um, it's a smaller device. Uh, it still has a lot of the functionality, but because it's smaller, smaller screen, uh, you're going to be using it less, smaller battery. Starting at 429, I thought it was 399, but I guess, um, you know, um, Inflation, I guess. <laughs> it has 5G, this one, I think, too. Maybe that's why they just switched it. But um, yeah, the, the newest iPhone SE. Um, 
has like you know the a15 bionic is very powerful very nice but uh, you can definitely um, use it and it's going to be uh, better if you use it with get break or unplug or get clear space a lot of great stuff happening uh, in there so you know really appreciate uh, uh, that you check out those links and you know if you if you have anything in specific that can help you in there hopefully that that allows you all right uh, that question took a little bit more extra time but let's continue um, does the Verizon still offer the ten dollar month plan by any chance yes they do however I believe that they have gone up a little bit in price so what we're talking about here is if we go to verizon.com and um activate later no i don't want the points right now so if you go to personal and you go to mobile and you go to bring your phone man so many advertisements okay you go to your own phone um you get started and you put new customer of course um and you I think I can give you guys an example because I have a light phone that I'm not using and I believe I can copy that IMEI. Yes, I can. I think this is it. I'm going to try. So you put um, other devices, you continue, uh, smartphone, other device, you continue and you put an IMEI. This is a light phone IMEI. And boom, it tells you, yes, this device will work in the Verizon network. This is my broken uh, light phone. It doesn't work anymore. Um, but you put the IMEI, it will tell you to continue. Um, I'll just put a zip code that is nearby. And uh, this is for like illustration purposes. So there it is, uh, the light phone too. This is the, the IMEI, new line of service. Let's see what happens. Um, I believe it is 15 now, um, and this is loading. As you see, it has a little bit of like a little lag because, um, again, it's, it's uh, how can I explain it? Like, you know, they, they don't, they don't like, um, it's, it's hard to get to. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. So let's reload. Maybe this works. Okay. It should be here, but again, like as you see, if you go through that process, it should allow you to choose a plan, but it's going to allow you to use the connected device plan, uh, which means um, we can look this up, Verizon plan. So the connected device plan, um, it's essentially a smartwatch plan, but you need to go through those steps, right? So you need to go through, maybe it's because I'm blocking something. Maybe, uh, you know, I'll, I'll test it later. Uh, again, it's buggy. Their their website is really buggy. Um, but their plan is for usually for smartwatches. And usually it's going to be uh, $15 without the discount, right? So it's $15 without the discount for, um, that means if you have a line. So 50% um, discount off eligible smartwatch plan requires a smartphone line on unlimited plus unlimited ultimate get more unlimited or play more unlimited so without the discount it went up to 15 dollars. it used to be 10 dollars, but it's still a good deal if you have the best compatibility being verizon in your area another option that i will give you um another option that i would give you is uh, us mobile so us mobile it's my personal carrier. I've been using them for the past three months now, and they have excellent plans. They don't only have a $15, uh, very similar, but no taxes. So on Verizon, it'll be 15 bucks plus taxes. But here, it's $15, no taxes. Uh, taxes and fees are included, so $180 for 12 months. And you get unlimited uh, talk, talk, uh, data, talk, and text. And you get 10 gigs of premium data, which you really don't need on the light phone. And you get international calling and texting. And you also get hotspot add-on. Uh, you can add it for extra $30, $30 per year. The nice thing about the Verizon plan is that it does have the hotspot included on the plan, on the, on the connected plan. But what um, US Mobile does have is this uh, specific plan, which I personally think it's enough for the light phone. 
uh, which is the light plan. They actually call it the light plan. It's $6 per month, including all taxes and fees. So $72 per year. This is the one that I have. And I have one gig of data, unlimited talk and text. Um, and that's all I need because I don't need international calling or anything like that. Right. So I really like it. It's a, it's $6 a month. I mean, that's a steal, you know, in, in, in the, in the terms of like all of these different things. Um, so I, I definitely, I definitely like, um, and I definitely think it's a, it's a good, Oh, oh my gosh. I wasn't even showcasing nothing to you guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so I'll, I'm just going to go back. Uh, to this. Um, so let's go back. So what you need to do is you need to go to the Verizon um, page. You click bring your own phone. Um, when was the last time that I was, uh, you guys should have said something. I'm sorry. Um, how, what, was I showcasing to you guys even the, the, the unplug and the brick and all of that? If I wasn't, I'm really sorry. And I'm going to go through it like super quick. Um, uh, so let's go over it right here so unplug um so unplug you can buy it and as the lady showcases there it will block instagram and if you want to use it later you need the tag you have get brick app which showcases you the distractions um and you got get clear space which allows you to uh you know kind of go over um an intention base so it blocks you it tells you, hey, how many, how many times or how many minutes you want to use this. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you can enable the apps in whichever one uh, you want. So I'm really sorry, guys. I, I think I, I thought that I was showcasing to you guys what was happening, but clearly I wasn't. Um, so if I go to Verizon um, again for the bring your own phone, um, you will have the ability there to bring your own phone, uh, you go to phones, you go to new customer, you go to the, the IMEI, uh, I don't know my making model, IMEI number, it will tell you, yes, this is a compatible one, you continue, and then, oh, okay, so this one's already in the cart, <laughs> you continue, um, it tells you it's a light phone too, and then it gives you a plan, uh, right now this plan is not working, but you should be able to sign up with it, and it's 15 bucks a month, but Again, I prefer the light, uh, the the U.S. mobile plan, which is six dollars a month, seventy-two dollars a year, which I think is just a better deal. Um, I'll link you guys to uh, all of those resources for iPhone. So let's see, get brick. Let's go over it um, here. Then you have get clear space which is another very good one. Um, get clear space. And then you have <clears throat> um, get clear space and then you have dumb wireless. Talk to you guys about that. And I did talk about unplug as well. So unplug. Oh, there it is. Unplug. Boom, right there. Okay, big Q&A <laughs> that we had right there. Um, okay, Johnny O, thank you very much for your um, uh, super chat. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Um, really appreciate the support for you guys, that you guys have, always give uh, to the channel. And uh, definitely when it's uh, also you know a super chat, a financial one, I really, really, really thank you for that. I really um, appreciate when you guys are continuing to support this, uh, live stream and like, you know, all of the different things that we do here in the channel to help people reduce their screen time. Okay. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, if you have any questions specific, Johnny, O, let me know. And you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, then you have, uh, Tom says, I just bought a GMM nine super basic phone. Love it. Yes. Very good phone. Uh, it's, a, it's actually pretty decent. Um, really like it. Um, especially if you only need phone calls and one-to-one -one text messages, it's, it's an excellent device. Uh, a lot of people saying they will use, um, they will use like these um, kind of like SE, you know, like, or LTE until, until it lasts no more. I think that's a good, that's a good idea. 
Um, okay, let's go for more questions. Do you know uh, Trout? Uh, do you know any good apps for smartphones to help with transition to dumb phones? Yes. Uh, so the ones I linked, Unplug, uh, Get Brick, Get Clear Space, um, are excellent resources that will help you reduce your dependency on smartphones and kind of block you. Again, re-engage you with that reality that, hey, I'm choosing to engage with this or I'm choosing not to engage with this. And the nice thing about Get Clear Space specifically is that it gives you a timer, right? So like you open the app. Um, maybe I can do a little demo. Uh, I do have a smart device here. Uh, I don't have their app installed. So Get Clear Space. Search the App Store. I'm going to download it so that you guys can um, look into it. And look at how it works. Uh, clear space, come on. Okay. Clear space. There it is. Make for make your phone less addicting. That's what they say in there. Uh, so I'll showcase how that works. Um, I do have Brick. I've used Brick before. Um, uh, but in the meantime. Uh, did you talk to your friend about Nokia's new phones? Any news? Uh, yes, a little bit of news. Uh, so they are going to be releasing, um, besides the pink Barbie phone. So if you haven't, phone summer 2024. So Barbie, uh, Barbie phone is coming. Um, and it's going to be a flip phone from HMD or Nokia. And essentially, uh, they're going to be having a specific <laughs> kind of like themed Barbie phone for this uh and it's going to be a flip phone um i've been told that do not expect it to be very powerful it's just essentially a marketing you know kind of a thing but they are releasing the nokia 3210 a re re release of it um let me see where is it 2024 yep so and this one they have confirmed with me at least that it's probably going to come to the United States. So, um, let's see. Nokia 3210. Um, I'm trying to see. Yeah. So this is the one like they, they are bringing this, uh, these, uh, devices. Uh, so these two are the, um, ones that are going to be coming to, to the States as far as I've been told. So the 3210 4G and the 2254 G are going to come to the, to the, to the United States, Nokia 3210. Um, and they're going to be announced sometime soon. So it's going to be pretty, pretty, uh, you know, coming up soon. So I don't think anything here showcases that, but yes, the 3210 and the 2254 G refresh, are going to be coming to uh, the United States, uh, as far as I've been told, from the Nokia devices. So there you go. I am Vin91. Um, okay, metal ladder. Last question so far. And again, if you guys have any questions, start putting in there. I do have two things that I want to talk about before we go. Um, and this is like the AI devices that are coming up. So I'm getting my first dumb phone soon, but I don't know whether to get the F21 or F22 Pro, which is a better transition phone. I personally prefer the F21 Pro because it's a smaller screen, a smaller footprint. So it's going to just be better for you um, to to kind of like uh, to kind of like use it or do that. I personally think it's going to be a better experience because, again, um, it's very important that you recognize that the how large the screen is, uh, large screen. There's a picture. The bigger the screen is, here it is. The bigger the screen is, the more distraction is going to be apparent. So um, there was a, right there, amount of distraction right there. When you have a smaller screen, less distraction. When you have a bigger screen, more distraction. And that's just kind of like what, what it looks into you know, and kind of like, um, that's just kind of how it works. So you have to uh, recognize that this is a reality. So I personally prefer the F21 Pro because it has a way smaller screen than the F22 Pro. 
and it has a, a better ability to get stuff done. You know, you can still get stuff done. You can still get the apps out there, but because it's smaller, it's going to just be better, you know, to use over time. Last question sneaking in <laughs> from Olivier. Um, it says, is the Light Phone 2 still the best choice? Um, I would say until new devices come out, it's still a top contender. I mean, the updates just keep coming. The device keeps getting better. But um, there are other very good options out there. You know, don't don't limit yourself to that. Uh, you have the... Oh, it's so hefty that it makes a, a little bit of a sound, which is the Cat S22 Flip. This is a good device still. And um, now that it's cheaper, this is like 59 bucks, $60. I definitely think... Um, yeah, I definitely think that it's just a, it's just a better um, idea, you know. And, uh, um, you know, Cat S22, the Jelly Star, you know, like we talked about um, how to make it a little bit more minimal with the, I mean, I have this minimal launcher called um, Niagara Launcher, but you can also try Before Launcher or you can try, you know, uh, Minimal Launcher or O Launcher. Those are super basic. So try different things, see what sticks with you and how your brain works. But if you need something like the Light Phone 2, um, I think it's still the best contender. The e-ink screen, the uh, really nice things that uh, are just kind of like working. Um, um, I, I, so I personally think that, that those are, you know, uh, things that I really appreciate, right? So like uh, Cat S22, um, light phone too and maybe a change in your smartphone you know maybe uh, install one of these app get get clear space or unplug or you know some of that some of that stuff um matthew elsword last comment said but the cat s22 flip doesn't work in the us i think you mean with verizon or at&t because it does work with t-mobile so you should not have any issues making it work with t-mobile um but maybe in your area it's not working i don't know uh, if you can give us more context that'll be appreciated uh, let's go to the next topic. Uh, we had a long Q&A, which is a good thing. I love it when we have a lot of questions. Um, but the next topic is, uh, let me see. Let's go to the, um, it is now an hour. Q&A one, an hour and what? 12 minutes. One hour and 12 minutes. 30 seconds. We're going to go over the humane AI pin. So the humane AI pin is technically a, is it a dumb phone? I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've been deciding a lot between like, you know, okay. So I almost pre-order it, but I decided against it because I was like, okay, it's too expensive. Um, the humane AI pin. Oh, I guess that domain is available. This domain is available for sale. Uh, clearly, they don't uh, they don't want that. Uh, that's so weird. Humane.com. Okay, sounds good. So the Humane AI pin is a piece of hardware that gives you. It has like a laser, and it's supposed to like you know work really well, and like have like uh, kind of like touch controls and that kind of stuff. Um, okay, I'm showing you guys the screen. Perfect. Um, then you can talk to it and it gives you responses and that kind of stuff. Um, so like, what's the exhibit and Ava recommended this or like, you know, when, when it texted you and that kind of stuff, um, you know, like it's supposed to have all of this cool functionality and like yada, yada, yada. I mean, look at that. Like that, that looks crisp, like, you know, like in, in, in the shadow and like it has really nice depth and all of that good stuff, right? So it's a small device, very small, like this. Um, let's go over order. But here are the reasons why I didn't order it. Okay, so as a as a like a general rule, I'm against subscriptions. Like I am so like it, it's very difficult for me to subscribe to something because I prefer to give like a one time payment. So I'll, I'll subscribe to things that are annual um, because it's like, okay, I pay it annually. You know, um, if I don't want to pay an, uh, like annually, I will go back to, 
I will go back to um, uh, like my finances and look into it and recognize like, did I really get a lot of value this past year? So I'll give you an example. The gym is instead of doing a monthly subscription for me, I do an annual subscription. This past year, I subscribed to the YMCA. There's a YMCA close by. And to be honest, I haven't used it that much. So this upcoming year, I'm not going to do it because I'm like, well, you know, it wasn't really worth it to me, right? So I personally think that um, it's one of those things that I, um, like, it's one of those things that I'm like, I'm, I'm always having a struggle when there is a new product that comes out that requires a subscription. It's not optional, right? So like if, if a new product comes out and I'm like, hey, you know, product, great, a lot of value, a lot of good things. But when it requires a subscription for it to work, then I have a problem with it. So it's not like, oh, you're adding value to my life and I can choose each month whether I'm going to get that extra value or not. Another example is, let's say you get a Tesla, right? So Tesla, full self-driving, just came down from $199 to $99, right? So I don't know if they have the pricing here. Uh, shop. No. So I don't think they have, but essentially, um, let's go over the model three here. So you have a Tesla, you buy the car, you pay something, right? Like the car works without the full self-driving, right? Um, and you can look into like the custom versions and whatnot and the interiors, but like full self-driving, you can add it as you see right here, full self-driving capability for a one-time fee of $12,000. Or you can not get it and then unlock it for $99 a month. Okay, what's the problem here, in my personal opinion? If I'm paying $99 a month, right, um, then that means that I get the full self-driving capability for like 10 years, uh, and then it breaks even with my one-time payment. But the problem is that, in my personal opinion, when you're buying a car, like, especially if you're buying a Tesla, you know, it's like you're spending so much money that it's like um, you're getting a rebate from the government in certain uh, versions, like the performance for the Model 3 or the Model Y or whatever. And then you're like, well, you know, might as well get this extra feature with it because I'm paying so much for it. But when you're paying so little <clears throat> for like the Humane AI pin, I mean, you're paying $699. That's not little, little, like, you know, but in comparison to a car, of course, it's very little. But then for this device to work, you really need the um you really need the the subscription right so like the humane ai subscription like this device will not work it says to use your ai pin you'll need a monthly subscription and i'm like wait what why like I, it, that doesn't make sense that 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 just doesn't make sense to me that for the device to work like there is no way that i can connect it or pair it to another device share data in that sense like <clears throat> to me, that's just like a turn off, like automatically. I may still get one to test it for one month and then maybe ship it back because I don't want to have $700 of like paperweight in, in, my, in my house. But I just hate when they make devices that you have to get a subscription for it to work. And it's 24 months plus taxes and fees. They put it in gray right there for you not to look at it, but it's plus taxes and fees, right? So, okay, fine. You get this device, it's $699. It may replace your phone, right? Like, you know, you still have access to all of your AI, you know, related things and and whatever, which is cool. You know, it's a different device. It's the future of technology and you can speak to it and it gives you answers and you can connect it to like the different things and listen to music and have all of these apps and, you know, kind of stuff in it. <clears throat> Fine. I'm okay with it. You know, it looks cool. It's different. You want to be an early adopter. No problem. You want to pay the subscription. Fine. Pay the subscription. No problem. But then you get to the reviews. And this was crazy to me. I mean, um, The Verge published a review. MKBHD, one of the biggest tech tubers, uh, tech reviewers. The worst product I've have ever reviewed. I mean, that's big words right there. I think The Verge gave it a four. I'm trying to find the article that they posted. Um, maybe here, David Pierce reviews. Yeah, there it is. 
So for $6.99 and $24 a month, this wearable computer promises you to free from your smartphone, which is great. I mean, I think a lot of people need that freedom from their smartphones. There's only one problem. It just doesn't work. Yes, it doesn't work. If you watch this review or you watch MKBHD reviews, I mean, it's just horrible, right? To, to like, um, it's really slow, apparently. I've, I've seen the demos and doesn't work half the time. Miss is missing way too many basic things. So again, you have a device that is supposed to be good and is supposed to, you know, work and you're spending $700 in it, right? And it still doesn't work as advertised. Look at that right there. This is the projector. This is not as high fidelity as they make it look in the advertisement of this um, of this device. So if we go back to the humane AI pin. Um, let's see, where is this? Uh, I want to know a change log roadmap. Nope. I guess I can just say AI pin, right? Yeah, there you go. Look at how good that looks. Now let's compare it to that. This is like jaggedy and like really horrible. Like, you know, it just, just doesn't look good. This looks crisp. This doesn't look crisp. And that's just a problem, right? And when you're using it in direct sunlight, you can't really look at it. So I feel like they, I mean, this is just first version, right? But I just wouldn't get it because it's $700. It's a lot of money. Like, you know, like that's that's a lot, a lot of things that I just don't think it's going to be a good device that I'm really excited to use and, and talk about, right? So I personally think skip this. Don't waste your money. Uh, something that I, I did pre-order and I'm, I'm open to talk about it and I, I'll tell you why I pre-order it. It's because I think it's going to be better than this, which is the Rabbit R1. I still have my doubts on certain um, things and how it will do them, but I'll tell you why <clears throat> I think of this as a better device. Number one, price of uh, price is way lower. We're talking about $199, right? So when you take a $200 gamble, right? Uh, I mean, that's that's way less than a $699 gamble. Number two, the Rabbit R1 has no subscription. So it works via Wi-Fi. It actually has a SIM card that you can insert. So technically, that's the subscription part. But I can pay US Mobile six dollars instead of paying Rabbit A. Um, I mean, not Rabbit. Uh, instead of paying Humane AI, uh, twenty four dollars. And if I'm guessing how they're maybe working with T-Mobile or maybe they're working with like another company that is like an MVNO and then upcharging, right? Which a lot of companies do. Nothing wrong. You want to remain profitable. But I'd rather spend two hundred dollars in this large action model, which I still don't think is going to be perfect. Um, no subscription required. Um, and again, it does have some like things that you can watch a 25 minute presentation on it. I'm not going to make you watch it here. Um, let me <clears throat> showcase a little bit though. Um, so it's a bigger device, right? It's kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like a, you can speak to it as well, but it has a screen, something that you can interact with. Um, with the other one, it has a laser, which is kind of like, wait, like you can really use it. The reason why I got this is because I think it can be a good intermediary step, right? So when I need to read a QR code or when I need to like maybe do a payment over whatever, you know, and, and all of this, this kind of stuff, um, it can, you know, recognize pictures and maybe order an Uber, right? Like, you know, so, uh, let me see, um, ask for, you know, like information, right? So that kind of stuff, I think it's better because it has the app connectivity that or infrastructure that we already have, no subscription, and you can make it work whenever you want for $200. Whereas with the AI pin, this thing doesn't work if you don't, um, it doesn't work if you don't pay for the subscription. So no subscription, better operating system per se, right? Like, you know, it's more like simple, understandable. It's not using these gimmicks for the laser. 
and you can do tickets, reservations, map research, shopping, music, ride share. Like, you know, this is what they're hoping to, for it to do, right? And I know, like, you know, with a lot of the Kickstarters and that kind of stuff, but I pre-order it because I thought that it was a good companion device to my Light Phone 2. The Light Phone 2 has some gaps, like Rideshare, or it has gaps like Spotify or that kind of stuff. So I personally, personally think it's just a better product for way cheaper price, way, you know, softer of a gamble. And um, yeah, you know, it's just like a better... Um, a better idea for me, my personal use and, and where I'm willing to put my money. And you will see a review of this as a companion device to a dumb phone. And I think that's what I like. If I can do these extra things without all of the distractions of a smartphone, food, tickets, travel, reservations, ride share, music, map research, and shopping, right? If I can do those things without the void of notifications and distractions and the massive large screen that a smartphone is, I'm very, very happy. Very, very happy. So I'm going to close this section on the Humane AI pin plus the Rabbit R1. And I think it's I think it's going to be a better, better device. Um, for those reasons. <clears throat> okay, let's see. A uh, couple questions or comments um, kind of related to this. It says, um, Olivier says, uh, nice, I tried Nova Launcher with minimalistic configuration on my Android, but it's still a full Android. Yes, that is true. Um, I recommend that you look into ADB, so Android Debug Bridge, so ADB App Control. Remove your apps completely from the from the root so you're not able to reinstall them you just uh, kill them from the get-go remove the browser remove those things just leave the things that are actually helpful to you and you clear any app that is not actually going to be you know um, helpful for you that's a recommendation that i have but another recommendation is get a smaller phone amount of distraction is it depending on the screen and also Another thing that you can do is just get a um, you know a more basic phone. Uh, explore maybe um, you know what are your needs, uh, what is the thing that you really think that it's it's needed in your life, and see if you can go without it for a little period, right? So like if it's WhatsApp, um, if it's um, you know something like uh, um, I another thing I recommend for those of you that need WhatsApp in your life for whatever reason is Beeper. So all of your chats in one app, and it works across different platforms. There is no more wait list anymore. So you can just connect and look into your messages and read them on your computer or your tablet or whatever it is. Uh, and you can aggregate all of your networks. So you can delete a lot of those apps and just have the Beeper app for communication. So if you have Instagram or LinkedIn, um, Telegram, Signal, Matrix, Slack, Google Chat, you can put all of those in one chat app and delete the app so that they're not distracting you with the other features that they have. So like Facebook Messenger will be just for Messenger um, and, you know, kind of like uh, have, have that ability right there. Um, so that's uh, another recommendation. Let me give you guys the link to Beeper. Yeah. Okay, uh, next uh, comment. Uh, Fafafi uh, says, what do you think of Japanese and Korean flips that are rare to find and unknown to the masses. Uh, there was a guide um, on Reddit. Slash dumb phones. <clears throat> oh, R. No. Yes. So if you go to this um, state of the dumb phone, um, there is a link. There should be a link here. you're interested in Japanese phones. Hmm, I don't have it here. This is weird. I should have it here. J J Jap Aha, check this post right here, perfect. So. This is a consolidated guide to Japanese flip phones um, by Killmonger V1. 
he created a very comprehensive and amazing guide uh, that I highly recommend you look into and um, that you definitely look into like, hey, how to own a Japanese flip phone, the Kyoceras, the, you know, SoftBank, Docomos, like, you know, like all of those different devices. Uh, you should look into whether they work in your area. And again, it's a, they're nice looking devices. I have one. I have a Kyocera device here. Um, there's not a lot of updates to it just because <clears throat> they don't, um, yeah, they, they're not like, you know, uh, um, super popular. So um, I, I don't think they do a lot of OS improvements. So that's kind of like a little bit. Um, let me update my trusty timeline. Sorry, I need to. So we're kind of like discussion, Q&A kind of area. <clears throat> so now in this discussion, um, uh, yeah, so look into look into that, look into the the um, ideas uh, from this guide for the Japanese, if you're looking into something specific. The nice thing about the Japanese phones is that since they're running Android, um, they have a lot of functionality. So you're still able to use maybe with a mouse or a Bluetooth mouse, uh, some of these things that kind of help, you know, and that, that kind of make it make it better. Um, okay. A uh, couple of extra comments. Subscription model for me really fails when you realize that companies can pull support for the subscription at any moment. Very true. You're essentially left with a useless device and you invested $700 in it. Um, then you have, I'm interested in ditching a phone entirely in favor of voice over IP. Uh, then I'm thinking of carrying a mobile hotspot in books, e-ink, Android tablet. What problems should I anticipate with an EDC like that? Uh, probably coverage. That's the only thing. Um, but overall, you shouldn't have any issues, uh, James. Um, if you get a books palma, um, <clears throat> let's go over it. Books palma. Uh, you should have a good uh, good device. It's it's a good size. It's an e-reader. Um, somebody asked, "What's the closest dumb phone to light uh, with a camera?" Uh, this would be, but it's technically not a phone, so you would need some sort of Wi-Fi to make it work. Um, the only thing that I can think. Uh, Maybe it's like it just doesn't work um, maybe with certain apps, but it has the Google store. So I, I don't see you should have any issues. If you are committed to voice over IP, I think you should be fine. Um, in my personal opinion, as long as you have Wi-Fi or a hotspot enabled device, you should be able to do that. Uh, the other recommendation is look into the Hisense devices, Hisense Ace um, 9, right? So um, if you use the Hisense A9. I have a review in it, but uh, I'll just showcase this one, I guess. Uh, you can get it for about $300. Uh, and this one is a proper device and it works with T-Mobile. But if you have a different device and you're, again, if you're looking for voice over IP, the books Palma should be fine. And I believe you can get them on Amazon for $279. So yeah. 279 uh you get the device it's a little bit smaller it has a camera i don't foresee any big issues because it has android so you're able to install pretty much all the apps that you need but because of the e-ink it's a slower refresh rate and you know you kind of like look it over in that perspective so it's going to just be um just better in in that regard so i don't i don't see um i don't see the issues right so like uh, in that sense um, another comment we have from Yaksan, uh, life on two is horrible. Okay. Can't believe such an expensive phone has so bad battery life while being just a simple e-ink device. Um, then you really don't understand how phones work in the, in 2024 right now. Um, the reason why the life on two has quote unquote horrible battery life is because of, it has a small battery, 900 milliamp hour battery. And it also has 4g draining the battery. Like, you know, I mean, again, it depends on your coverage. Mine, as I said, and as I can showcase here, um, it's 1104. This is my second day of usage. I'm at 36%. I'm fine. So you really maybe need to look into a different carrier for your coverage. Uh, these are the things that impact, especially niche devices. And yeah, I mean, it is horrible for some people because people are expecting the long battery lives of like, you know, 
the good old days when it was like seven days, nine days, right? Um, if you put this device on airplane mode, if you put this device on airplane mode, I will guarantee you that it will last you at least three, four days because it's not using the signal. So um, I know a lot of people that use it that way and their light phone lasts for a long time because it's an e-ink screen and it's not consuming a lot. But the antenna, that's what is actually consuming a lot of the battery, not necessarily um, the device itself. So, you know, <clears throat> that's something to consider. And again, you, there are other options. So you don't have to, I mean, you guys don't have to get the light phone. This is just a, something that I personally like and um i personally think it's it's one of the, the better ones for me you know so okay all right um let's go over a kios update uh, a little bit of an update for kios um not a big one but getting better uh kios.com uh, and if you guys have any questions again just put it just put it out there okay kios.tech i always forget these domains sometimes they don't have the dot com version Okay, kiostech.com, kiostech.com, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> okay, um, so here we have the, <clears throat> here we have the kios devices. Um, then you have a little bit of an update here. Oh, let me see if I can get it a little bit crisper. That's better. Okay, so um, no, this is the Nokia 2780. Uh, definitely a good device. Uh, they have been doing a couple of optimizations on the operating system. Um, not a ton, so it's not going to be the best device in the world still, uh, but it still has the KaiOS store. Um, okay, my Wi-Fi is not connecting for some reason. Uh, give me a sec. Um, so they did a little bit of like extra updates <clears throat> for KaiOS. I received an update the other day, a little bit faster, a little bit better. Um, so, um, okay. I think it's getting my Wi-Fi again. There it is. Connect. Network not found, but it's there. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna not be able to showcase to you some of the KaiOS features, the KaiOS store features, but um, of course it still has the distracting apps. You will have to move them. I'm gonna showcase, you move it back, you move it all the way down. So you they're not in your most used apps, uh, but it, it does have some really nice things. Uh, Pod LP is working better um, for, for me at least. Um, they have a lot of you know uh, new kind of like updates that they have done. Um, but Pod LP, very good. And um, it has podcasts, so now it's working very well for me. It, has, it was crashing before. Um, Maps is still step by step. They're not gonna follow you or it follows you, but you have to kind of go into the kind of like next step. Um, recorder, notes, to-dos, so very basic functionality. Oh, the Wi-Fi came back, yes. Okay, so maybe keep it there. Uh, I can showcase to you a couple of the updates that it has done. But um, I really like that KaiOS is getting a little bit better on their support. Um, somehow they have started to listen to the community a little bit more. And there are new devices that are coming out. So um, I would say keep, a, keep an eye into it. Um, and there is this new device from, I believe it is in Tanzania. There's a new one from Energizer. I can showcase to you some of these things here. Um, meanwhile, we wait for this one to load. <clears throat> but they did um, this a couple blogs. Um, apparently, recently, Kairos Flips recognized as best of 2024 in two categories. Uh, consumer Cellular Iris Flip, very good device. Uh, uh, that one has, has actually gotten a lot of updates. And now you can unlock it for... Uh, different carriers so very good uh, very good coming up and um yeah it does again these these two phones um, are being recognized by us news as best budget flip phones apparently for easy operation i will tend to concur because it this it still has some functionality but it's very easy to use and you know it's it's fast uh, kios 3.0 is faster 
Um, so they have fixed a lot of like those little annoyances uh, with the latest updates. And the store keeps getting bigger and bigger. So that is that is also a good thing. Um, as you see right there, you have social, you have games, you have utilities. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is not, um, <clears throat> apparently it's not connecting very well. So that is uh, something to consider. You know, you have games and, you know, a couple things. They can be distracting sometimes, but because of the screen being so small, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue, in my personal opinion. Um, yeah, so KaiOS is getting better. Um, not to recommendation levels for best on phones in the world, but the Iris Flip and the 2780 are definitely the best in this specific case. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an update on KaiOS. And we started that probably about four minutes ago. So 134, uh, I'm just gonna put it under discussion plus KaiOS update. Okay, uh, we have a couple extra questions. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Um, Armenastra says, does the iPhone work in Canada? Does anyone have experience? Um, yes, technically it does work. Um, they are still working. Um, they're still working on the TELUS official compatibility. So I personally wouldn't get one in Canada yet until they have the, their perfect compatibility. Um, I know it's a little bit of a bummer, uh, but I will wait because otherwise it's going to be a hit or miss experience. I have a person that uh, frequents the channel and they bought a light phone too. It worked for about three, four weeks and then it stopped working. So they went with the Sunbeam F1, um, which <clears throat> I have here. Um, I guess I can give you guys an update on that. Uh, Sunbeam F1, great flip phone, you know, very good to use. But uh, the light phone technically works in Canada only in certain areas. So right now, I wouldn't trust it until they get that full certification with TELUS, which hopefully will come sometime in May. Um, I know they have been working on it for a year and a half now, and it's been very, very difficult. And they were very close to launching it. But it's coming soon. Hopefully, uh, I will reach out to them and see if, if they have any updates on that. Okay. Uh, let's go for... Um, more questions. Uh, so let's go over discussion and Q&A and starting now at 140. Q&A two. And we have to finish in about 30 minutes max. So I mean, I probably will probably finish before then. But you know, um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, make sure to put them now because we are going to be going over um, uh, them pretty quickly and then we're going to go over you know a lot of other different things okay let's see so i'm really interested on this dumb phone thing but here in my country the choices are very few mostly because of the network band bummer faris uh indonesia yeah um yeah well try try to get the best you can you know and you try it out and see if it works for you and otherwise you may you may want to try um something something different um, or maybe try to import one from AliExpress or something like that. Um, here, uh, I'll showcase this in the meantime that we answer a couple questions. So this is clear space. Uh, I was talking about how, how to use it. Um, notifications allow next not to track. So if I want to restrict an app, uh, let's say we're going to restrict the games. Okay. Retro Bowl. There you go. I want to use Retrobowl once a day. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Retrobowl and I'm going to try to open it. And it's going to say, no, don't open it. Don't play Retrobowl, even though it's one of the greatest games. Um, then it's going to say like, hey, we're going to get you into a centering exercise. And it's going to say, breathe in, right? So it intercepts your usage. Uh, even if you want to use it, it intercepts it, right? So breathe out and it gives you a nice quote. How we spend our di days is how we spend our lives. And do you want to use it? If I want to use the app, it's going to tell me like, hey, do you want to use it for one, two, five, or 10 minutes? And I'm going to say, you know what? Let me play a game for 10 minutes. And then it's going to kick me out. But in this case, um, okay, I don't want to use it. So I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to try again. It's going to tap the notification. 
and it's kind of going to do that, do that system. So this is a good system for some of you guys that are trying to learn that self-control um, and trying to reinforce this, like cho choose when you're going to open an app or not. Um, another really nice app. And then like, hey, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to use this. Boom. I go back and it will give you challenges. You can step to scroll. It will tell you like, okay, if I, you know, allow my data, uh, my calories or steps from uh, health data, if I need to, I need to earn, to, to earn something, to earn scrolling time, I will do a thousand steps for one minute. So one minute of scrolling time for a thousand steps. That's perfect. You know, maybe you want to make it a little bit easier. 450 steps, 650 steps, you know, whatever it is. It's a good app. I think it's a good system. And of course, um, Brick is another one uh, that I said. You tap something, you brick your phone, and you're not going to be able to use it. So uh, those are, you know, some recommendations out there. Oh, yes, we had the Sunbeam F1 here. Okay, let's continue with more discussion. Um, let's see. I'm getting four to five days uh, of the Nokia 800 Tough. Very good. Poor Voon. Um, that's a good phone. Sadly, it doesn't work here in the United States. Uh, how often do you do YouTube live streams, Jose? Is it on a specific day and time? So usually it will be Monday or Tuesday. And usually it will be from 9 to 12, sometime in that range. And it will be once a month. Um, I don't have a... Sp usually it's... It depends on how my month goes and how much how busy I am, but for the most part, it's usually the second or the third week. So that's kind of the range. Um, I try to schedule it in advance as much as I can, and then I looked at my month yesterday, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna have time um, to do my live stream, so I need to do it tomorrow." And I wasn't able to uh, put it in the schedule. But I usually try to schedule it in advance and put it in the networks and, you know, put it out there so that people have time to prepare with their questions and that kind of stuff. All right. Continue with, I uh, just bought the Sunbeam F1 and was um, wondering if you have a good recommendation for an MP3 player that does Spotify that can connect to CarPlay. Ooh, that, that is a, that's a good one. That's a good question. Uh, yes, not cheap, but yes, um, the Sony AW105, I think that's the one, A105, yes, so the Sony Walkman NW A105, it's a $350 MP3 player, but it can do both things. It does have USB-C and it does have Android Auto and you can connect it to um, CarPlay, CarPlay, like Android Auto plus Spotify. It's expensive, but it will do the thing that you're asking in specific. Um, otherwise... I have seen this advertised, but I don't know how it works. Um, that's the cheapest one, I believe. But like, let's see, Android DAP. Let's see. Um, maybe you want to try one of these. Uh, <clears throat> maybe this one. Hibby is a good company. It's a reputable company. So Hibby, if it has Android 13, um, the Hibby Digital M300. I just don't see the Play Store here, which makes me believe that this doesn't have Google Play services. Because see right there, it has cool APK, and that means that they don't have the Play Store. Uh, it has a Snapdragon 665, so it's technically compatible. So I would choose to maybe try this one because it's cheaper. Oh, there's a Play Store it's there, though. Hmm. That's uh, confusing. Um, let's see which allows you to download and install third-party apps. It has 3G running, mem 3 gigs of memory. Um, I would say try this one. The Hibby, Hibby is a good company. They're a good uh, Android device company. Maybe there is a review. There are some really good reviewers for these digital Android players. Hibby M300. There it is. 
Super Review, my favorite guy. This guy is so good. Like he does a very good extensive review. It's 21 minutes and he does it over a live stream, I believe. So um, if you need um, that, I would say the Hibi M300. Let me mute so that we don't get any copyright. But all I need to know is if it does have... Um, Hmm. Aha, there it is. Okay, I see Spotify. That assumes certain level of, you know, usefulness. I mean, there is Spotify, but I don't know if there is a, a Play Store. That's a five stars? Four stars. Four, five. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. That's good. That's good. Okay, so that's good. Um... <clears throat> so I will go to this guy's review and ask some extra questions, but he's really good. And he probably will explain everything that is available or everything that is not available for the Hibi um, M300. But apparently he gave it a very good um, rating. So um, Hibi also has a store and it's cheaper, cheaper than the, than the um, Sony Walkman uh, A306, so there's an A306 now. Um, I, I used to get the A105, but yeah, they get the A306 if you want something better, or the M300. I don't see the Play Store here. So that is why I'm like, okay, if it doesn't have the Play Store, it cannot in start, uh, install Android Auto. And if it, can, if, if it cannot install Android Auto, then it kind of doesn't work for you. But I know the, I know the Sony does, and I believe the Fio as well, does field devices dap so i think these three options should be in your kind of like um radar but it just depends on the budget i think that's what depends if the m300 can install extra you know um, extra things like um let's see m3 pro here because you see, they have like so many different ones. Um, but make sure that, no, that chipset is not going to do it. You need a Snapdragon chipset for sure. Um, this one, M11 Plus. This looks big. Snapdragon 660, that's good. But it needs to have the Play Store to, dry, to download Android Auto, or at least it needs to have Google Play services or the ability to install Google Play services as well. Um, Android Auto sometimes runs without Google Play services, but it's not guaranteed. So those are some, this is a good question. I actually haven't had that question in a while. And actually, I'm glad that you did because now it gives me some things to, to think about. But the Hibi Digital M300, the Sony AW NW A306 or AW105, and try to get the FIO, FIO Digital Audio Player. Oh, these are more expensive though. $9.99? Oh, that's not, that's, that's too much. No, so yeah, look look for something more on like the one to three hundred, you know, area that has that has the ability to do um, these extra things. Oh, okay, wow, that was that was definitely not expected, but a good rabbit hole to go into. Okay, um, yeah, if you can connect it to Android Auto, then again, the the Fio or the um, Sony. The Sony will for sure do it. I have used mine and it works really great. Okay. Fares says, what do you think about KaiOS after the updates? Will they have a future? I hope so. Um, I think it's getting better, but we just have to wait uh, for it. So it is what it is. Um, don't don't trust it until they continue releasing things. Uh, more, more comments or questions. It says, I tested life on in Tijuana, Mexico, and it worked fine. So glad. Good to hear. Like I said, it does work in Mexico with AT&T MX and Mexico, AT&T Mexico, and it works with Telcel. So maybe you tested a different carrier. I would love to know um, <clears throat> um, another one. Oh, Trout uh, has a good comment on the on the um, on the different things. Um, uh, you can get a cheap tablet, a fifty dollar tablet install Spotify and Android Auto and you know you you have that too. But sometimes 
you want the extra experience, right? Like the extra niceties, bass and whatnot. And you want to have the digital audio player for, for that. So, you know, it just depends on your budget and things that you want to do. So, yeah. Okay, let's continue. Um, does the Lightphone work in the Netherlands? Yes, it does work. Um, the Lightphone does have a compatibility tool that you can check. So the lightphone.com. They have uh, what they call a compatibility checker somewhere here in the website. There it is, compatibility. If you scroll down and you put your country and in the Netherlands, it works with KPN, Odido, which is, used to be formerly T-Mobile and Tele2. Uh, unfortunately, it's not compatible with Vodafone Zigo. So KPN, Odido, uh, you have the ability to use that with the Lightphone 2 uh, in the Netherlands. And you can put any country in here. But again, for example, I'm going to put Mexico here and it's, it's going to say it's not compatible, but it is, it's technically is, but that's just because we have done uh, uh, the user testing. So if you want to have more specific questions about the Lightphone 2 and compatibility and that all of that good stuff, I highly recommend that you join the Lightphone Discord because the Lightphone Discord will uh, help you. Uh, okay. Uh, the Lightphone Discord will help you uh, answer those questions that uh, are not available on the um, um, like on the on the regular Lightphone website because we do more testing or hacking and doing a, kind of like a couple of extra things. Um, okay, so um, I think somebody said something about the M300. Uh, yes, Techie Bytes. It says I have the M300 and it does have Google Play services plus Google Play Store. Uh, he just disabled it, but it works. Awesome, good to know. That's actually great. Um, it allows us to um, know that it probably will work with Android Auto and for $200 is way cheaper than the 349 Sony one. So yeah. <clears throat> okay, Matthew Ellsworth. Um, do you know of any slide phones that work in 2024? No, the last one that we knew about was the headphone K1. Sadly, they went out of business, I think. They're not selling them anymore. They may still be a couple of extra ones here and there uh, being sold like last stock, but they are not updating anymore as far as I know. <clears throat> this phone technically works. Um, calls, text, you know, that kind of stuff, text messages and all that, but it's not... Uh, I don't think it's being supported anymore. And if uh, maybe I'm mistaken, somebody please correct me. I'll appreciate that. Okay. Let's continue. Um, let's see. More questions. What would be your opinion on a phone that was the size and shape of the iPod Nano 7? I don't remember that, but that's probably super small, right? Probably iPod Nano 7. No, no, it's like small. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, that would be cool. That would be really cool. It would be really small and, you know, ideal for like loading stuff. I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's a phone, you know, it's like it, it, we, we will go back to the days of the iPhone 3GS, right? I mean, when you remember that, like, I mean, this is, this is a small phone. Like if you remember the iPhone 3G, it's like super small 3.5 or 3, 3 inch display, 3.5 inch display. And it did what it did. It was basic. It had the music, and but you know, it wasn't like super distracting. It was just a phone. But now we have gargantuan Apple 15, as I can uh, showcase here. iPhone 15, right? So, boom, massive phones, right? Like the iPhone 15, um, or the the Pro Max, yes, get the Pro Max, which is even bigger, right? Like it's like super massive. Um, but that's just that's just what people want. People want more entertainment, they want more distraction, and that's just kind of what it is. So um here, click. Yeah, there it is. Oh wow, look at that. Looks nice, but a lot of distraction. So it is what it is. All right. A couple extra questions. Um, let's see. Mm, I don't see anything else. Okay, one more. How to install the mouse APK for Sony XP3 Plus. Have bad news for you. The XP3 Plus is not compatible with a mouse. Um, even if you were to install it, which you can technically do it, uh, it will not work because um, it's blocked from the usage. So 
I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but only the old version, the XP3, is able to work the virtual mouse. Um, but if you want to know how to install it, the steps are as follows. You go to um, mouse, virtual mouse, APK. Um, this guy right here, this GitHub, Viresh Matt TV, Matt VT has a virtual mouse. Uh, this is the one I use for all of the devices that I tried it on. You go to their releases um, right here, releases. You go to Matt VT 106 or the latest one at the time. You go to assets, you download it, right? You download the APK. And what you do is you put this file you open wherever it is that you find the file, you load it, you transfer it, you connect your dumb phone, or you know, in this case, the Sony MXP3 Plus, you connect it to the computer, you transfer that file, and then you click that file wherever you put it on your Sony XP3 Plus, and you install it. And then you start playing around with it, but it will not work, sadly, because the XP3 Plus is using <clears throat> Android 11, and Android 11 has a fatal issue with the mouses that does not let it work, sadly. So there you go. Um, all right. Ali uh, says, so glad that I have my dumb phone. Mental health improved a lot. Glad to hear. Um, Tech Bytes Unleashed says, uh, looking for an alternative to Google Pixel 4a that's more compact for everyday carry. Considering the Duokin F21 Pro requirements, Android as I want to uh, have, I think have signal messenger. You want to use signal messenger. Um, yeah. So let's go to the dumb phone finder. Um, if you want signal, let's go to the dumb phone finder. I've been getting a lot of messages. Um, sorry. Give me a second. I just need to check that I'm not missing anything important. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So uh, let's go to signal. I have a signal filter here. Signal messenger. Yes. So I have the ability to use that. Uh, probably we're going to click T9 because uh, it's going to be more compact automatically. Um, Android, of course. Uh, none, not needed to be with Google. Okay. So a couple options. If you want to take a gamble, I wouldn't, but you have the Punk 10 Sierra 2. If you were to go that basic and you need signal, it technically can use signal via pigeon. I don't recommend it though, personally. Um, Kyocera Digno 903KC, a good option. Um, more cumbersome to use in that sense. Um, that's it. That cannot be it. That's a problem. If that's okay, let's um, okay. Let's see. Give me more options here. Why is that the case? I just clicked Signal Messenger. That was it. Okay. Um, AGM M seven for sure, and the uh, Xiaomi devices should be here. And they're not. Let me check my database. This is a problem. For some reason, uh, this is this is not good. Xiaomi, Xiaomi, Xiaomi. Where are you? Sorry, I need to fix this. This is not good. Yeah, it does have all of that. Signal Messenger, right there. Yes, F twenty one, F twenty two. Why is it not showing up? Okay, I'm going to have to check this later, but for some reason the Xiaomi's are not showing up and they should because um, if it has Signal Messenger, oh, oh, view more. There it is. Now we're talking. Maybe there was a problem. Okay, let's try it again. Signal. Okay, something's going on that I don't know why, but it's not uh, working in this specific sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I'm going to have to figure this out, but uh, there's a problem here. But the Xiaomi F21 should be able to use Signal Messenger. Um, the Maybe my logic is wrong here. Oh, these are not all the phones. Okay. Okay, this is a problem. Yes, uh, I'll fix this, guys. I have no idea why. Okay, how the light phone showed up. Interesting. Something's going on with the Dolphin Finder. I'm going to have to find out what it is. <laughs> uh, bear with me, but uh, I will uh, I will figure that out. You know, there should be more phones here than what showcases here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to go check it out. Anyways, um, Xiaomi F21. Yes, F21 Pro. Good, good choice. Um, you can also use the Tick Mini. Um, so let's go to the pages here so take mini m5 similar to xiaomi f21 but better compatibility in the united states so i don't know where you're at uh, but if you are outside of the united states xiaomi f21 good and if not the take mini um maybe consider more compact definitely the jelly star another compact device uh cat s22 technically compact but it's big <laughs> and heavy uh, and the Xiaomi. So I think those are those should be good for you. Those should be good. All right, let's close up with 205. Let's see. Um, 205. We're going to do a last um, Sunbeam F1. So the Sunbeam F1, great phone. Um, they have had a couple of extra updates. Um, they have added them. Um, so this device, very snappy, very good to use. As you see right there, it has navigation, it has ways, it has weather, um, sound recorder, and a lot of other things. So very good device in my opinion. And, you know, it has gotten a lot of updates. I can showcase some of those updates on, the, on their website. Um, Sunbeam Wireless. No, my account. Let's go to Sunbeam Wireless, just regular. Sunbeam Wireless. So you have the f1 pro and the f1 horizon they're very similar the f1 horizon is just a hundred dollars less and it's not as rugged uh, but it does have sms voice messaging picture camera gallery and there are different versions that have different features so some of them don't have sms some of them do have sms some of them don't have voice messaging some of them don't have ways some of them do have ways um but very good and they also have a documentation area uh, that they tell you like whether you have an issue or you have you know whatever like it's going on how long does the battery last how long is it supposed to last does it work with this carrier they also have a place for updates the latest pro series updates was march 27 a few days ago and they did this um you know this look all of these different things great company i uh, highly highly recommend them um i'm gonna put a link in there if you guys are interested in checking it out I personally like them because they are committed to listening to the feedback, number one, and making it better. Um, so Sunbeam F1 gets a link as well. Um, good question. Is the Sunbeam F1 still only available in the U.S.? Yes. However, they're working on, a interna on an international version. They are working on an international version, and that's really, really exciting because it's going to come out uh, for Europe, I believe, and Asia. So if you're interested in the device, um, talk to them and maybe they already have um, maybe more more knowledge about that. I was just told that they are they were exploring the possibility, so they're looking into it. Um, last but not least, techless.com. Um, the Weiss Phone 2 is coming out this summer, apparently, and is going to have different uh, abilities, you know, kind of like a basic phone and a smartphone body. Only thing I don't like is that you are required to have their plan. So you're going to be using their plan with their device. Otherwise, it's not supposed to work and it's not going to work, which, again, I think I already established that I don't like that lock mechanism where it's like, hey, I sell you a product and you pay for it and then you have to use my service. I'm like, ah, I don't think that's nice. But, um, you know, they have, uh, if you're interested, take a look into it. Um, and if you have any questions about any of the things, uh, make sure to uh, leave them in the comments. I'll be interacting with you guys, you know, and answering more questions beyond this live stream. 
lightning round. Uh, we're going to finalize this live stream with a couple of book recommendations. Uh, let me just update the. Let me just update a little bit of the um, <clears throat> timestamps. So, con book recommendations plus um, conclusion. There you go. All right, 209, perfect. Okay, so book recommendations, um, highly recommend that you read The Anxious Generation. This is an amazing, amazing research book. If you're a parent, if you work with children, if you work with teenagers, if you work with adults <laughs> that have grown up in the smartphone generation, this book is a must. The Anxious Generation is a very, very excellent book that will teach you and remind you why um, right now in our life, you know, we're dealing with so many mental health issues and he has anxiousgeneration.com. He has a research section that is free. Um, you can go in there and look at the evidence and look at the charts and major depressive episodes in the last few years, uh, internalizing disorders, um, uh, you know, like previous uh, U.S. anxiety reported data, emergency department visits for self-harm, and you just see like the graphs go up and up and up, especially after, you know, 2010, and like it just gets crazy, you know, uh, on like how all of these, these things happen. An excellent book, excellent research, and he provides a lot of solutions that I think are helpful for our understanding today. Uh, next book, uh, Scarcity Brain by Michael Easter. If you want to fix, of course, no book is going to fix you, but if you want to fix your understanding and understand more of how to fix your craving mindset and rewire your habits to thrive with enough, not with abundance, or not, but with enough, this, this is an excellent book. Excellent, excellent book, Scarcity Brain. And the other one that came before this, The Comfort Crisis. Comfort Crisis, embrace this comfort to, re to reclaim your wild, happy, and healthy self. I think I already gave you this recommendation before. Amazing, 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 amazing book. Very, 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 very good. Um, another one that I'm currently reading, Slow Productivity um, by Carl Newport. Uh, it's a little bit of a rehash of um, deep work. So, you know, he embraces deep work principles and expands them on a little bit more, gives new stories, is a good read. Uh, for all of these, I just want to kind of remind you that you don't have to buy anything. You can go to the libbyapp.com and you can sign up for these things. Um, as you see right here, I have it. You rent it for free. You have to wait to listen to some of these things because there's a lot of demand. Uh, but sometimes they, they have books that are really good. And um, right now, this is the one that I have. And usually, they bring you with other ones. So LibbyApp.com. There are some libraries in the United States that allow you to sign up with the Libby app without having to reside in the United States. So you can look into that in order to save some money. I want to make sure that you understand how important um, and all of these have audiobooks, so you can listen to them. Um, and, and they're, again, excellent, excellent books. Uh, last but not least, uh, two good books to take care of your finances. I have been thinking about uh, finances in the last few months and how important it is to integrate. Um, I have a personal project that I'm coming up, I don't know if this year or next. It's going to be called, as you know, I, I do have a newsletter called the Moving Offline uh, Newsletter. Uh, but let me show you the book and then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the project uh, and to close to the conclusion. Um, so you have The Psychology of Money uh, by Morgan Housel. Great book, Timeless Lessons of, on Wealth, Greed, and Happiness. So very good book uh, to organize your finances. And another one, uh, highly recommend by Ramit Sadie. Um, I will teach you to be rich. No guilt, no excuses, no BS. Just a six-week program that works. 
Um, I think he has good principles about money management and how to rewire your brain to not think, oh my gosh, I cannot spend in a coffee, but think, how am I going to afford that? And how is it going to be part of my rich life or what he calls uh, a rich life? Very good. I really, really like those two books on money. Uh, last but not least, let's go to my Substack. I do have a Substack um, that you may be interested in. It's called Moving Offline. Um, okay, let's just go here and then go here from there. So you have moving offline. Um, I post, uh, probably about twice a month in here. And my latest one was about finding humans more often. I did a reflection on the anxious generation and I do post a lot of helpful, um, things in there. Uh, offline hobbies and how to get uncomfortable, how to, you know, remind you to inspire. It's a little inspirational, a little bit like hacks and things that you can do. I do have a uh, printed newsletter coming up. Um, so I'm really bad at plugging my own stuff, but <laughs> you know, that's fine. Um, you know, moving offline Q1, if you want a printed newsletter um, of what I wrote in the first quarter of 2024, I am printing one. It costs $10 and that, um, I'll be shipping it out by the end of the month, uh, by, the, by the end of this month, hopefully, hopefully next week. Um, we're in, currently in the printing process. Uh, but my project for moving offline, and this is something that is going to take a long time and I'm going to be updating throughout this year because I am in the research phase. Um, my goal for probably this year or next year at some point in time is I'm going to go offline for, for like either six months or a year. So I'm planning to leave the internet and all of its dependencies for six months or a year. I don't know which one is going to be um, as of now. And I want to produce a little bit of a documentary and reflections and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm really I'm really excited because I'm, I'm in the research phase right now to see how feasible it is, especially with work. I need to make a couple of accommodations for work. <laughs> and um, I will keep you guys updated, but the moving offline project is going to be real. And I, I'm, I'm still like thinking about how long it's going to be. Uh, but I really want to document my experience of like, what does it mean to truly live offline? And what are some of the challenges and kind of like things that you kind of have to... Um, give up. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how I'm able to work it out, but I'll keep you guys updated as I, as I think more about it. I'll definitely talk about it in the moving offline newsletter. Uh, so again, if you have any questions or anything, make sure to put it in the comments below. Um, thank you for being here in this live stream. I really appreciate your support and everything that we have done and, uh, you know, everything that you guys do. Um, if you have, you know, kind of like a need or you want to talk in private or email, uh, my email is on my about page, uh, on the YouTube channel and you can find more, more of my information there. You can also DM me on different platforms. Um, if you're interested in talking or like have a specific question that you feel like it's not necessarily public, you don't want it to be public. Uh, that's okay. Um, so yeah, reach out and I'm always willing and able to help people because I know how bad it was for me uh, a few years ago when I was glued to the screen. I mean, today, you know, I've spent two hours talking about this, but um, the rest of my day is, is talk, walking the dog, doing, making dinner, just having offline experiences. And I'm really happy on, on the things that I've been able to kind of like curb over time. And I hope that you're able to find that balance for you as well. You know, we don't have to all leave the internet, but we can all have a better engagement with it. So I hope that you find what that engagement is for you and that it helps you, you know, just kind of like uh, create a more uh, balanced approach for your life. So hope uh, I was helpful today. Hope I gave you something to think about. And if you have any questions or extra things that you forgot, you can come back to this live stream, make a comment, and I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.